In this video, we are going to look at sum if, count if, sum ifs, count ifs, and nested if condition. Count if, sum if, and nested if conditions come from the family of if function. These functions come in handy for quick calculations and decision making. The count if function is a specialized form of an error formula which is great when you have a single condition. It is a function that will count the number of entries within a range if certain condition is met and the data within each entry can be text or number. It does not work well when you have multiple criteria. The function count ifs has been introduced to counter this problem. Count ifs counts the number of cells based on multiple specified criteria. Sum if is a function that will add the total number of numerical entries within a range if certain condition is met. This means that sum if only works with numbers, so if your range includes any text, it will be ignored. Just like count if, sum if facilitates only one condition. To foster multiple criteria, some ifs has been introduced. This brings us to the topic of nested if condition. Multiple if functions are used when user wants to evaluate multiple logical conditions. In Excel 2010, up to 64 if statements can be nested. That means 63 ifs can be in your formula. 63 being nested inside the first if condition. It is advisable to use choose lookup, vlookup, and hlookup functions to test multiple conditions. If you would like to learn these functions, refer to our other videos. Now let's look at the syntax for these functions. Let's look at COUNTIF first. COUNTIF consists of two arguments, range and criteria. Range is a group of cells from which you want to count non-blank cells. Criteria is a specified condition based on which you would count the cells. This condition could be in the form of text, number, or expression. Now let's look at syntax for the sum if function. Sum if consists of range, criteria, and sum range. Range is the range of cells that you want to apply the criteria against. Criteria is used to determine which cells needs to be added. Sum range are the cells to be summed. Similarly, sum ifs facilitates multiple conditions. Let's look at the syntax for sum ifs. Sum ifs consists of sum range, criteria range 1, criteria 1, criteria range 2, criteria 2. And this goes on until 127 criteria ranges and 127 criteria. Sum range is the range of cells which needs to be summed. It should not consist of blanks and text values as they will be ignored. Criteria range 1 is the column from which the first condition is evaluated. Criteria 1 is the first criteria specified in the form of text or number or expression which is used to filter the criteria range before summation. Once again, criteria range and criteria spans from 1 through 127. Each cell in sum range, which is the first argument, is summed only if all the arguments in criteria ranges are true, else it generates a value of 0. The syntax for count ifs consists of criteria range and criteria. It spans from 1 through 127 and it is very similar to the syntax of count if. Criteria range is the range of cells which needs to be studied for a particular condition and criteria is the condition specified by the user for counting the cells. Finally, the syntax for nested if condition. Since we have already seen if condition in our previous video, I'm quickly going to take you through the syntax. The only difference between simple if and nested if is that nested if harbors multiple if conditions. In Excel 2010, it can contain up to 64 if statements. If conditions consist of logical test, which is a value you want to test. Value if true is the value that is returned if condition evaluates to true. Value if false is the value that is returned if condition evaluates to false. Value if false is where the second, third, or the 64th if condition is introduced with another logical test. 
Let's say your boss has asked you to determine how many orders are on hold based on column D. We're going to use COUNTIF formula to determine this. Either you can type in the COUNTIF formula with an equal to sign directly in the cell or you can use the functional wizard by clicking on the FX here. So I'm just going to type in COUNTIF and click go. COUNTIF will appear under select a function and I'm going to click OK another window will appear. The first syntax under COUNTIF is range. This is the column from which you want to count the cells from. In this case, it would be column D. So I'm going to go ahead and select column D. The next syntax is criteria. This is the condition in the form of number, text, or expression, and it defines which cells are to be counted. In this case, it would be on hold because we only want to determine how many orders are on hold. So type in on hold, but before you do that, type in open inverted comma, and then type in on hold, and then close inverted comma, and then click OK. There, you have seven orders which are on hold. Let's say now your boss has asked you to determine what is the total quantity under category beverages. So in a nutshell, he has asked you to sum the quantity for the category beverages. Quantity falls in column E and category falls in column B. So I'm going to simply type in equal to and then sum if open bracket or I can just go ahead and click FX here. The first syntax here is range. Again, this is the range of cells that you want to evaluate. In this case, it would be column B because we want to sum up the quantity for beverages. Our criteria would be beverages, which is the next syntax. I'm going to type in beverages and I'm going to put that word in inverted commas. Sum range is the final syntax. This is a column where you are actually going to get the sum from. So that would be column E in our case because we want to sum up the quantity. And now click OK. So this is your total quantity for beverages. Imagine now you want to find out how many beverages are there which are on hold. So you can see there are two criteria defined in this case. In order to accomplish this, we are going to use some ifs. This is the formula which fosters multiple if conditions. And if the user wants to sum a certain column based on multiple if criteria, then he or she can use this formula. So either you can type in equal to and then sum IFF, open bracket, or you can simply go to the functional wizard and type in some ifs, S-U-M-I-F-S, and click go. Some ifs will appear under select a function and then you need to click OK. Another window will appear. The first syntax here is sum range. This is the actual cells which need to be summed. In this case, it would be our column E. So we're simply going to select column E here. Our next syntax is criteria range. This consists of the range of cells that you want to evaluate for a particular condition. In this case, our first criteria is beverages and that would fall under column B because that consists of product categories. So we're simply going to select column B. And the criteria for that is beverages. Either we can go ahead and type beverages here or we can go ahead and simply select cell H2 which already consists of this criteria. Our next criteria range is column D because we want orders which are on hold and order status is defined in column D. So I'm going to go ahead and select column D here and the criteria for that would be on hold. So our second criteria falls in cell H2. So I'm going to go ahead and select cell H2 and now I'm going to click OK. Here you have 425 beverage categories which are on hold. On this note, I would like to introduce you to my next topic, which is nested if. Now imagine if we want to reevaluate a certain criteria based on multiple conditions. Let me take you through an example. Let's say we want to reevaluate the unit price of various products based on order status. unit price and order status is defined in this range. Let's say if the order status is invoiced, then we want to add unit price plus one. If the order status is on hold, then we want to subtract $1 from the unit price. 
and if the order status is no stock then we simply want to add 0.5 dollars to the unit price if the order status is none then we simply want to retain the unit price as is so let's see how we can do that type in equal to type in if and open bracket our first logical test is if order status is equal to invoiced so I'm going to click on cell C8 type in an equal to sign and in inverted commas I'm going to type in invoiced close inverted commas comma if this is true then I would like to add plus one to the unit price so cell E8 because that consists of the unit price plus one comma if this condition is false then any of other three conditions could be true which is on hold no stock or none so again I'm going to type in if open bracket and our second logical test is on hold so again cell C8 equal to in inverted commas on hold comma if the order status is on hold then I want to subtract one dollars from the unit price so our unit price falls in cell E8 minus 1 comma if these two conditions are false then it could be that order status is no star or none so again I'm going to type in if open bracket cell C8 which is order status equals to no stock no stock close inverted comma comma if that is true then I want to add 0.5 dollars to the unit price so E8 plus 0.5 comma our final is if none of this is true then we just want to simply retain the unit price so again I'm going to type in if order status equals to none then retain the unit price else retain the unit price close bracket now you need to ensure that you close the bracket for all these conditions and click enter there and simply double click on this plus sign and it will fill up the columns accordingly just to check since our order status is invoiced it should be 19 because 18 plus 1 is 19 because our order status in cell C9 is on hold the unit price should be 17 and it is hope this was useful this video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy a premier learning initiative by CXO Math for any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomap.com. Thank you.